Cast number 16 with Ryan Holman. What's going on, dude? Just Here drinking some right tea. Now. Oh, God, I moved it away. It's okay. Oh, wow, look how clear. When we were arm wrestling. Uh-oh. Oh, dude, you have equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Arm wrestling before I moved it away, and I forgot because I was out of breath. Here we go. We're off to a good start. I want everybody to know that I had nothing to do with that. Faulty equipment. Can I please speak with the manager? There we go. Dude, yeah, it seems like it might do it again. Yeah. No, okay, okay. Should be alright. You can hear me. Yeah, now we're good. We didn't actually plan that. <laughs> it's all a performance. It's all a performance. That's what if anyone knows me, that's what it's all about. There's no real life. It's just a performance. All of life is a stage, right? Yeah, right, yeah. And we're just the actors. That's I've Shakespeare. definitely That's Shakespeare. pretended to that my whole life. <laughs> but yeah, you can see it. Let me see it. There, let me see it. Oh, yeah, because I was like... Face. I was afraid to touch it. That's a, yeah, I'll touch it. I'll it touch was going to knock, knock itself now down it's again. Yeah, that whole time, if I was going to lean around the mic <laughs> to look at you... <laughs> It was just my natural instinct was to look around it rather than over it. <laughs> yeah, no, not everyone is as comfortable with mics in front of their faces. I'm comfortable with a mic, okay, just not ones that fall apart as soon as I touch them. <laughs> yeah, these were thirty. I didn't want on that Amazon, to, you know. Just thirty for, bucks for both of them, yeah. Well, not the mics, the arms. Oh, okay. No, the mics are a little more than that. I'm going to start a podcast. You should. It's easy. <sighs> Man, I don't need something else to do, though. You can do it with just your phone. You don't have to set up a live streaming thing like I do. Yeah, no, but I wouldn't do it without all this stuff. Yeah. that That's half the fun. Yeah, no, the live streaming is really nice. Like, doing it just from my phone, I may as well just Instagram story all day long. Well, I mean, audio. Like, you can... Oh, yeah, pod, like, not so all you, podcasts. You could put, like, a, your, your phone in the middle well. between us and then just have us talk. But, you know, you want it to sound decent. I think. And yeah. having microphones is make makes things sound decent, as far as I know. I'm uh, just going to check and make sure I posted that thing that we're going to be on here. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got someone I in the chat. I feel like we got distracted right as I was posting. <laughs> yeah, we got someone in the chat. Fairy Frequency, she says. Yep. All right. No no likes yet. I'm drinking tea, too. you know, the algorithms. Turmeric. Hey, we're drinking turmeric ginger tea. She's addicted to it. Uh, well, I think you should get she, that checked actually, out. Yeah, addiction is a. We're drinking ginger turmeric tea from Rishi, and I just met someone who worked uh, who works at Rishi Tea yesterday. He's a fiddle player for my new ensemble. Whoa! Yeah, and you just met him yesterday. Uh, I just found out he worked for Rishi. <laughs> it's like he's already playing just in like your. That. I'm like, man, can <laughs> I be in your band? I play harmonica. Yeah, you, you should come. Fun jam and toast. I mean, I hear presents. I'm, is... I'm trying. To... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> was that a? Um... It was a jam at the end. Yeah. No. Do no. You no. Play no, I no. No. I don't. Oh, okay. I mean, I c come on. It's harmonica. It's easy enough. <laughs> it's like Have not like tried? there's buttons Have or you ever tried? strings. Uh, when I was little. Yeah. Played. It's, you know. It's hard to along think with think piano to man. Make it sound good. God, but, no, I know. But to, but to, I know you're right. all instruments look easy, but they're not. You're right. It is easier than like a saxophone or a flute or something. Or like, it doesn't take that much to like make noises out of it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like a, a kazoo. Yeah, exactly. It's more like a kazoo. <laughs> it is kind of more like a kazoo. It's, it's got like reed. A, it's got a reed in it. A clown kazoo. A clown is to a kazoo. <laughs> 
what a uh, cowboy is to a harmonica. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> I think so. It seems right. I, I remember <clears throat> there was this harmonica player I went to, was it Thurman's? Or was that place in Riverwest that just closed, but it's like not closed? Dino's. Oh, Dino's. Dino's. Yeah. And it was like the yeah, last. Yeah, what is up with that? Are they not closed? Or uh, All I know is I saw someone on uh, River West group. We should post this in River West group now. Oh, that's you cool know idea. the River West yeah, group. Facebook group. I, I don't live over here, but I watch it for entertainment. I'm. I, you guys can watch the Bayview one if you want. <laughs> is the Bayview one good? Uh, yeah, it's mostly like, like people. older people bitching where over <laughs> here it's younger people bitching. But same sort of stuff. So I cover both bases. But... <laughs> Somebody I know was like, hey, hey, does anybody know what's up with the Dino's building? I right. want to buy it or thinking about buying it or something. And and just everybody started like making these guesses. <laughs> and then later, I, I who I can only assume is the owner, <laughs> came in there and started commenting to all these. And it's like, oh, well, if you know what's happening, you know more than I do. And just stuff like that. So I don't know if Dino's is open or closed. May, uh I only went in there. Oh, yeah. I heard they had good food a while ago. Then I heard. I went there once. It was like sloppy. But I only went once. Mm-hmm. So and I went with my mom because I heard it was good food. And then we went, and both of us were kind of just like, it was like a cheap bun, like like old lettuce, like cold you know, the tom- you know really white tomato, but frozen for a while. Every you know. Oh. It it wasn't like how long ago was that? That was <clears throat> like last year, last yeah. summer probably, or last autumn maybe. Yeah, people were just always like, "Oh, their brunch is so good. Their brunch is so good." Maybe there's things that they were good. Maybe we ordered the things that they're not good. They're not good at. That happens. I don't know. You know that not at a good restaurant, but yeah, right. places making excuses. But What's your least favorite? And then I'll let you get back to what you're saying. <laughs> What is your least favorite Milwaukee restaurant? <laughs> My least favorite? Well, it was Dino's. No. I... <laughs> wow, that look at that power you have. <laughs> yeah, no. Punching down. You just put that uh They're gone. They're they're not even there and I'm still talking shit. Negativity if oh, what is the one I hate? There's a reason why no is in the name. Yeah. Okay, what were you gonna say and then I'll tell um, you my least favorite. Um well I, I was gonna say the reason why I brought up Dino's was because you mentioned harmonica. <clears throat> and trying to think of like a cowboy is to a harmonica, yeah, but I I think a drunk bluesman is much more fitting because there was this I don't know this guy's name. He, apparently he's in the scene. You know he he was, was leaning he was absolutely shit faced because this was like a going away Dino's. It might have I think it was a third like a, I don't even know. It was in the middle of the week and everyone was just shit faced, right? I mean, kind of typical Wisconsin. Like yeah, that sounds bar. like. Are you sure that's not the gig? <clears throat> No, it wasn't. I mean, that place is a similar vibe in, th- in that sense. I think a lot of people pal around the same things, right? River West, places that have live music. And so they were, they were, we, people were playing music until like 3 a.m., right? Because it was their last night. I was like, fuck it. No one's going to, like, who, who, who are they going to call? You know, like, like, it's the last night. And this guy was just absolutely shit faced. And some guy came out. We were out in the patio smoking. And people were like, hey, what's that? That was, no one heard that except us. The the <laughs> some some guy came out and they're like, "Hey man, come back out, play put play your harp, come back out." This guy could barely walk, man. He was so drunk, like he was just he couldn't even make sentences. He was just so drunk, and so then he went inside, and then soon enough, and then there was some person that came in next to me and just started asking me these really weird questions, and I didn't want to talk to them. So I'm like, "All right, I'm going back inside." So I went back inside, and this guy is killing it on the harmonica. Just absolutely killing it, but he could barely walk. He could barely talk. He could, and yeah, it's sometimes like that sixth sense, sixth sense. I think yeah, I think he uh, he must have yeah the 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 conditioning and the understanding of you know when and I I guess that's happened to me too sometimes when I'm when you know I don't drink as much these days, but when you know when I've done in the past I've definitely. Uh, I've definitely played when I've been totally inebriated, and I, you know, it, it, it. I'm sure it's not terrible, you know, because it is muscle memory to a degree. That's kind of what I was saying. Like, just that, like, you can be better at that than most things in your life because. But how, yeah, how can you play? You can play it, but you can't even speak. That's what's crazy. That was what was crazy to me. 
you know. Yeah, that's the one thing about uh, an instrument over talking on stage or singing is that you can you start to slur. Yeah, if you're too you slurring and you're off key, off pitch. But yeah, what's your least favorite? Cafe I'm, Lulu. Uh, have you ever been there? <laughs> uh, I might. Have, you mean I thought it was Lulu Cafe. No, oh, Cafe Lulu. I'm on Yelp right now. I can never remember the name. Oh, so you have your reviews? I do. Did you, did you give a review? No. Oh, but you gave him star, uh, one star? It's just one of those places. Just tr- Let me get on my... Yeah. No. Just... That's one of the things I, people, I, I described to you people as People love that place, and it's always based on the Asian slaw and chips. And that's all anybody ever talks about. Asian Sometimes chips. salads. And to me... It's not enough. It's just not enough. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just that. wanted to... Uh, it's like, is this a restaurant or an appetizer bar? Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, your sides. The sides are what your... This is your favorite restaurant because of a couple sides. Yeah, you shouldn't have to... If that's like how I can make that If that's Asian how you're slaw. deciding, then... Yeah, you should, they should start to decide a little more. Exactly. Yeah, that, I, I think... But I've, honestly, I, think I have once. to say I went back... To try it um, one more time since I talked a lot of shit, and it was better than I remembered. <laughs> my Two of my really good friends say they go there like two times a week. They live a couple blocks from there, and they just, you know. And I'm, I'll give everything another chance. I don't want to yeah. be a dick. And it wasn't bad, but I won't go back anytime soon. Let's put it that way. Yeah, there's other places. I'm trying to. Have you been uh, to the new one by Art Bar? Yeah. What's that place called? Wonderland, Wonderland Cafe. Wonderland, yeah. I've been there a couple times. I haven't been there yet. Oh, I was actually going to ask you if you have been there because it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, I figured Dino's closed just uh, over there. And then it's like this place opens up. Seems like a fair trade. Yeah. They were. Uh, um, Is it? It's not a bar, it's just a restaurant, right? Uh, there are beers and and stuff. I don't know if there's any drafts, but Art Bar owns it, right? I don't know if it's the same same owner, but it's like definitely friendly with each other. It's uh, it would make sense. It's similarly at least designed. Uh, but I didn't hear all the details. Um, but the food is good. I I've uh, been there at least two or three times. I'm a big restaurant guy. Yeah. We sh- we could talk for two hours about restaurants if you want. Yeah, to. I'd, I've only been to a f- <laughs> I, I haven't been to too many restaurants these last couple of years. I've been I've been. You go I, to the same place over and over. Well, I well some of them yeah, but because there's I always end up cooking for myself because when I eat out more, my stomach starts to get confused and and like it starts to hurt. I think that's what's happening to me. <laughs> well, because <laughs> frankly, because I, I don't. I guess I, I have very high sensitivity since I was a kid. I was the kid that puked on the bus, you know, from Ugh. eating too much sh- sugar in the morning. This makes sense. And so, yeah, like I, I puked on the bus all the time. And, and, and in school, like after lunch, sometimes I'd feel terrible because, I mean, they would feed us garbage. Yeah. You know? It was just garbage. Yeah. My body knows how to take garbage down. Mine but does it's not. Event- it's now it's like, Ryan, Bro, come on! You've seen those documentaries. <laughs> That's what my body's saying to me right now. It's well, like, I mean, food is. Food why do you is, keep doing this, man? Your your stomach is your most uh, primary brain. Like the. What are you trying to say? Well, yeah, no, you are. What I you, ha- it's not a, just a gut thing. health. I know all about all this stuff, yeah, yeah. and uh, and my stomach is actually like kind of gargling right now. <laughs> you said that. Like, <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. I, so that's why I, been that's why I tend to <laughs> that's why I tend to not I'll I'll go on like special occasions with friends and stuff and like I'll go out to eat but I love beer line now that I do, place yeah. I can eat beer line is the places I, that are good it's like at a guilt free vegan and like not not that because I'm vegan but just because they don't have they're more strict with their food you know like usually vegan places are more strict yeah and so and they source their stuff more locally and. That's the shit that I need. They're just more aware, too, yeah. Strict and just generally trying to give people a better option. Right, and that's why I go there every time. Have you been to Strange Town? Oh, dude. My friend just sent me... She just sent me a picture of the menu this morning, and he said, have you ever been here? Oh, go. 
Where is it? Absolutely. Prospect, if right? you like beer line, dude, Strange Town. I will go there. <clears throat> Strange Town has like a a smaller like a few things during the day, but then more things uh, at night. Uh, either are delicious. You're just limited during the day. Go at night. Go on a date or something. Yeah. There's not a lot of tables. It's good for like two or maybe like four people. Um, but I love it. You know, Matt and I. I probably told you before, but we're we've been like making our way through a list of restaurants between here and Madison, oh, shit. where she lives. <clears throat> And it kind of just started as, like, when we were going to each other's cities, she was like, I don't want to go somewhere we've already been. So then right. we started making a list of the places we had been. And then it became like, okay, we're not allowed to repeat anything mm. within six months. And uh, so we went from January to June, no, no repeats. And now we're at, we just had, like, our 125th restaurant between the two wow. cities. So... I like food. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but no, I, I do too. I've, kept, I've been saying for the past like two months, like I need it. Start eating healthier. One hundred twenty-five times twenty buck meals adds up too. You know, and I think some restaurants definitely it deserve does. the patronage. Like they they deserve the patronage of like there's nothing like a good restaurant for sure. I just I I have a harder time. We'll start it. cooking at home, okay? <laughs> that's not for you know it's just for me like that no no it like, i mean when i'm in control of my diet i feel so much better and my like it just takes one bad meal and then i'm i you know i shit bad for days yeah and it takes me days to recover just from one bad meal same with alcohol now like i, I can drink a little like a glass of wine or a little bit of whiskey or something but more than a beer if like i have two beers good luck yeah no two beers in two days in a row Beer is nope. it's it's like slowly Dude. poisoning me too. It's like too every bad time I, I have fucking some, love it. Yeah, it's every so time delicious. I have it makes me feel so good, and I love it. Yeah, no, I, cheers to that. Yeah, tea only now. Tea. Well, yeah, we bring tea to the club. Um, White yeah, claw no. is like a little better, I guess, but like, I ch- just the sugar and and all yeah. that. Yeah, no, like I, I was a big IPA guy. I was, I was, I was about all that stuff. But now, yeah, like if I have a full beer at the show, my face is like red, and my gut hurts. Yeah. So it's been mostly wine. I do wine fuck legit. with mezcal though. Like yeah. if I see a mezcal drink, but that, you know, it's been two days. I need to. I'm gonna try to go until Matt's birthday without drinking. Oh, yeah, I just did a whole sober. Oh month. no, it's one day. I so just far. did a whole sober month. Of November, of off of everything. That's why you're acting this way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, uh, the month's over now. <clears throat> <laughs> I had some drinks this past few days and other things. You know, I was uh, you know I took I I restrained myself from almost everything, any substance. Although I do take uh, multivitamins. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna get one of you to keep on your uh, computer. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's yeah. hard for me to give these away, so get it. Well, take it you. now. <laughs> I feel honored. I'll take the same photo for me later. <laughs> I can take one of you. Um, <laughs> Man, the people listening to the audio version, they just the silence and then the... I mean, it's not that, that much silence. People are listening think in so intently, you have no idea. Yeah, they're like, what the hell is going on? What? Every time there's a bit of silence. Oh, very frequency is saying some more things. She needs to check out the new album. Your new album? Thin Lizzy? Did Thin Lizzy talk about Dino's? Do you know about that? Um, Do you know anything about Thin Lizzy? Not enough yeah, to know either. that. Me neither. Yeah. Then then Lizzie did an album about Dinos. Oh, that's gonna look good. Yeah, it looks great. That's gonna be the thumbnail. This is one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. Who, who gave that to you? Matta gave it to me for my wow. birthday. She's a good gift giver. Yeah. Um, so now I just have something else to hoard and collect. <laughs> We've already gone through how probably yeah. about a hundred of these. That's Don't, fun though. 
Yeah, it's funny because as my family is literally like scanning in photos from the course of our life and yeah, ready right? to throw them away, literally ready to throw away pictures that are like 80, 90 years old. I'm like shipping them back to Milwaukee. And why they wanted to just do it all digital? Yeah. And it's like, I get that that takes up less space, but it's just not the same. Not it's just not space. the same to me. Yeah. Just a few binders? Yeah, I mean, my family has moved a bunch, and it's heavy, and my little sister, I don't know, she would, like, live with just, like, a backpack of, of sure, stuff. so they're pretty minimalist. Very minimalist, and I am maximalist. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you've seen the studio. My house is, yeah. like, there is, there's even less wall space uncovered or counter space or right. whatever. Um, I just like pretty things, pretty yeah. old things, psychedelic, pretty old things. So that's why I have so much day, stuff. One day you'll grow, you'll grow into a psychedelic, pretty old thing. I'm working on it. <laughs> mule sauce. Yeah, those are, that's sticker mule. When do we need to do the Thunderbird wine commercial? We already. That, I've already done that. <laughs> right. I already. I already did my commercial. This should be wine and not tea. That's all. I'm all out of wine, man. They only gave me so much. I could have. Hey, I should Jesus, have taken more. Jesus, could we get this turned into wine, please? <laughs> That'd be pretty. Yeah, that's with some alchemy there. Lead into gold. What do you think about alchemy? Um, the book? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm fascinated. I, I was never someone who's going to be, um, to fully understand that stuff, but it's, I it's, it. it's not even a, really a thing that's around now. It's just kind of like the ancient sciences. Yeah. It's like philosophy was so science. They called it natural science. Well, no, no, it's science. It's like all different. It's different back in the day than it is now. Now yeah. people say, oh, chemists, chemists and like psychologists are alchemists. Yeah, because it's just combining all the thought processes and. Yeah, I mean, that what what does a human have the capacity to to like interface with physical world? Like, what what are, what's the, what's the relationship between our our beliefs and thoughts and physical reality? Yeah, all that. I mean, that's the uh, basics of philosophy, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and, but the. The alchemists. There was one reason I brought it up. There's, there's, I read something yesterday. I don't remember the Latin, but it was a Latin. It was in Latin because all the, you know, I don't know, some Roman I only alchemist. Know, I only know pig Latin. <laughs> well, the, it was something about like, in filth you will find your truth or something, or like, look in shit to find the, the truth. Or like, and I think the modern interpretation is like, if you want to find something, if you want to actually know the answer to something, you should look where you don't want to look. Did you post this online? I've been posting so many shit like that. Though. I feel like I read something like that. So I was like, <laughs> "There's, I, I've been." I've You're been, allowed to. I was just wondering I've if been that's where I read a, it. I've been on such a kick. I've been learn, like reading these books and fucking just posting all these quotes and. That's you know. good. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm gonna take a photo of it next to my photo. Take a photo of the photo. Yep. So then I still have it. See that? Now we're just having fun. Is on the right hand side where people are talking? Uh, I think it's just the one fairy frequency, fairy frequency ASMR. I don't know what that. She said her husband had a fantastic song called Alchemy. They recorded back in '99. So she is a guy. I knew. She, I thought she was a lady. You were right. And then, yeah. So speaking of recording songs. First time I met you was at your studio, which you alluded to, the Here Here Presents studio, right over in Bayview. Yep. And I went there to see my friend Graham Hunt and Sam <laughs> Reitman perform <laughs> as Midnight Reruns, which yeah, we it's a sort of <laughs> sort of subject. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and then I saw David Zimmerman there, and. Uh, coming back, I was, just came back from Ireland, trying to get into this, you know, being like full time musician. How do I engage in the scene? 
I just started, you know, I was like, I know Graham. Let me just go to all of his shows and just, you know, I can be introduced to people. Um, so I, I was like, oh, this is cool. It was some, and then I looked up on your site and I was, and I saw some videos. I was like, oh, hell yeah, this just looks legit. And, and then I went and was just blown away by the whole thing. I was like, I, I just remember thinking like, this is happening in Milwaukee right now. Like how have I not ever heard of this or how have I never not known about this? Granted, I was just like engaged, just engaging in the scene. So it's not that big of a surprise that I didn't know about it. But like, I, I just remember thinking that and seeing David there and being like, wow, this is a real fucking sign. Like this is a, this feels good. Like this feels like the right place or like this, this has good, the things that I wanted to be more immersed in, like it was happening there. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the truth. That's what it was. It's exactly what I'm trying to could create. That. You no, you've definitely been a very, very good supporter and a very good performer on you know for years it was very you know that it's like you you know there's somewhere what's the best way to put it like they grow on you the more you have to watch them for like editing or graphics or whatever there's somewhere you like i don't know maybe you put it on mute the fourth time you have to watch it but yours is like the more i listen even just listen to your mixes shout out william yeah, um, he was on here last week. Yeah, I can't believe you fucking brought him on before me. No, he I'm asked. just kidding. He's with Amanda. Yeah, right. It's, so, yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> two's better than one. No, so uh, yeah, yours was one where I was like, "Damn, Ian's good." I mean, and I and I, you know, like. Sometimes I'll like bring in an act and kind of know their music before. I had seen you a handful of times, so I knew your music, but like you brought it. Like you're one of the people. We've now shot like 90 some odd videos. Wow. You're one of the, yeah, and we've only released like 64, so we've got a shitload coming. We've been doing a lot of yeah, behind the scenes work that's, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot There's of work. 30 more to do, man. Yeah. Um, but you're one of the only Jeez. people who just like looked in the camera, yeah. <laughs> like, which is cool, you know. Like, the, everybody has their different styles. Some people completely avoid it, you know. Some people think that that's the professional thing to do. I think ultimately we just want to create a space where uh, it doesn't feel like you're in a radio station or a right. studio, but more like a venue that is going to capture you like the rawest and realest. So I, and I was just, (laughs) you know, thinking about like my little speech and how I could make that better and more, more apparent to each band. Like, I just want to be like, we're not tiny desk. We're not KXP, like jam out, like make it psychedelic. Like that's the point of what we're doing is to give that like live show experience being captured you know on video in a cool psychedelic space but yeah i don't know i i I, you're definitely yeah uh, it goes noticed (laughs) that you support big time because the thing about that was like there was three bands that night and three amazing acts like and we were the last ones and so they everyone yeah (laughs) the only reason that that should happen was like because they were there and i was like like, yeah, like, you can't. I was like, you can't fuck this up. Yeah, I was like, this. Kaylee is, Conway, yeah, Vivi like, Lightbody, whose yeah, video is that. being released yeah, tomorrow. That. Yeah, that's very um, serendipitous. It's been a long. That you know, it, the way that it happens is like on a night like that where there's three. Some people, like, uh, like Vivi, for instance, she she had an album coming out in June, so she's like, you know, I'm not in a hurry. Right. Whereas like your album was coming out six months later maybe and you're like can we get this right ready and you know kaylee was probably somewhere in the middle she's so nice she's like eh, you know if you can or not you know whatever um so like then like vv's goes kind of back burner yours is more quick and then kaylee's is floating around and then it's just like then we'll shoot another three and it's like right yeah you know i i have two editors i have you know one sound engineer who does the mixes 
but it's still a lot of back end stuff. And just each yeah, poly no art man. takes me like five to 10 hours. So it's like, it's been a lot yeah, of man, like, that's... rather than doing, uh, you know, everything for one and then releasing it and then having to do everything for the next one and release it and being this gap in time right now, we're about to have like six ready to go. And I'm hoping that as Seven you know, we move through that, we can actually promote four weeks out for what's coming and six right. weeks yeah, out, yeah. which we've never been able to really do. Cause it's always like, I want to release that in a month and I get it like four days before the release, the final right. copy. So like now to have one where I'm like, just, I think it's really going to start to proper roll out for like yeah. everything. And there's a lot of big ones like in this next 30, most of the bands are touring bands yeah, from yeah. not from Milwaukee. But yeah, I don't know. I I've started to say really something just about how like, you know, having seen some performers maybe once, maybe just listening to the music before they come in. Uh, yours was definitely one where, yeah, the more I, I watched, it was just like, damn, yeah, Ian's good. Joseph Huber is another one. Yeah, he's amazing. Where it's just like, I watched that video and I'm just like, fucking get tears. I'm like, holy shit, I can't believe yeah. I have this, <laughs> you know? He's the first guy I saw sell out, a local guy that I saw sell out a space. It's like Anodyne or yeah, something? Yeah, I went there with my roommate Pat and it was the same type of deal, like, I knew one person that was gonna be there, <laughs> and I was and I was like, okay, it's good enough. I'll just, you know, like I I wanna I want you know you have to you have to hustle the networking game. You have to know what's happening in your city. You have to know what's going, on, and you have to know who's who's playing this shit. Like you know, so you can know who to, who to support and who to who to like try work with and who to you know all that jazz. Yeah, and so I. Saw that Joe Huber was playing, and I didn't. And I listened to some of the stuff online. I was like, "This is good," mm -hmm. you know. And I knew there was like a three fifty seven band that he was in. I heard a lot of that. I liked that. The new and, and the stuff he was working on. I was like, "This is cool. It's definitely worth checking out." And I went, and they turned us away at, at when we got when we got. Oh to man, and dude! We like, I... like, sorry, it's sold out. And we were like, "Really?" And I looked inside. I was like, uh, "And we we so we no we, anodyne we tucked our tail and we turned anodyne around. is painfully but, under but then cap." The lady said, she's like, hey, ac hey, wait, wait. And we turned back around. She goes, just go. I just don't tell anybody. <laughs> and and oh, I was like, man. Oh, dude, you want to know? So yes. I was there that night. Uh, really? I had promoted for Joe just like on my own. Like, uh, like we weren't promoting the show, but I love Joe. So I was like pushing the release show. I loved that album. So I was pushing the release show. We also like released our video promoting that show that he had shot with us. But I don't really love like buying tickets online and paying. Right. And I just didn't assume like I was going pretty early. So yeah, I didn't think it know? would sell out. And I got there and it was sold out. Whoa. And I was like, luckily, Wait. I just told the lady I was like, I help promote this show like i released a video yeah. i was like and she let me in and joe was like oh damn like yeah you could have called me out but i was like i remember like that heart sinking feeling like i've told like 20 people to come <laughs> to this like i have friends coming who did get turned away right so the moral of the story is get on the list yeah the moral story no buy, buy tickets in advance yeah, <laughs> but, but also good to get on the list if you know someone but don't ask me <laughs> yeah right i try to that list the list things i've always tried to avoid because i just be like okay once you open the list up then it's like oh i know then, then how do you know who even with my family it'd be like sometimes the family are the only people that i know i'm gonna get get Money. some tickets from yeah no, no that like, <laughs> amen it's it's like some people I you will, can pay involved, fucking five to ten dollars to go see your friends i'm sorry yeah. you you i agree Pay ten bucks for a beer. Fuck off trying yeah, to get. Yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. like I have paid more money for this. You know, like just like yeah, yeah. Don't I ask think. to be on the list. Like support your friends because you support well, everything else in your life. Yeah, see, the, the you should be the, the people. Position that should you should be support. the people should be putting you on the list if they if like you know what if I mean? they want right. yeah like. And to me, I, we, the last book, Tackala, 
all the people who were involved in the in the music video and the promoting of the event and like setting up the event and like and like those people I was like happy to put them on a list and you know yeah and then the other bands will be like hey can we put this on I'll be like uh, okay like we got to set a cap or something you know yeah luckily, because it wasn't one a big issue you know like just Otherwise, think about no it mathematically yeah. like if, if there's a a night with you know three bands that have five people let's say that's big but yeah 15 and each of those people get someone on the list that's 15 people in the door and there's some shows that like only like only 40 people, people up, yeah. come to or whatever and it's like just it's we make it so affordable and we put in so much work as promoters cuz you're not just a no, you know yeah, musician exactly. you're very much a promoter and you're someone that i trust a lot with it and someone you know obviously that i like working with you're actually able to be more on top of it sometimes than i am because <laughs> it's your show well right and you're, yeah. you know well it's like that's my, that's my one track mind of like this needs to be done this is all i'm working on where, yeah whereas you it have helps like, me though because then i can like reshare things, things that i can create original content for because yeah no that's a great feeling uh -huh. When you can just say share and yeah. boom, it's done. Oh, I did my promotion yeah. for today. <laughs> I do so, create some of my own. No, yeah, of course. It, you know, it's it's everyone everyone shares and everyone creates. And you know, for a while, I would just do that. I'd be like, all right, I need to make my own posters. I need to do my own thing. I need to be able to make it happen because no one else is gonna fucking do it. And if they that's the uh... and if they do, it's gonna take me. You know. It's it's a pain in the ass to work with people sometimes when it's like just get it done like and I have to everyone's got their own shit to do you know and especially if someone's working on a li very limited to no budget it's like what are their actual what is it's not reasonable for me to expect them to be working their ass off when they're just getting fifty bucks you know totally. or something and and for me it's like it's bigger than than that for me so I'm willing to put in the work and it's actually kind of fun. You know, it's actually kind of fun to make those posters. Like the Jam and Toast poster, that one was super fun. Yeah. Spooktacular shit, that was fun. Yeah. Like those, those no, that, one that worked out. Repurposing things, that's what I'm doing now. Just taking some old photos and repurposing them because it's like, I'm not an artist, but I can steal an angle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're all free. It's all under, no, I know. it's I'm all kidding. under, uh, borrow. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're all royalty free. But yeah, no, the, the, what are the so you got the VV light body thing? What's the next couple of shows that are coming up for here year? Is there anything coming up? Um, well, yeah. So the next it's jam and toast next Friday. Yep, the thirteenth um, at Enlightened Brewery. Uh, there's in uh, so I'll do releases as well, and I'll try sure. to go in somewhat chronological order. But yeah, VV light body drops tomorrow. Wednesday the 4th, is it? Yeah, Wednesday the 4th. Tomorrow, yeah. Uh, then the following Tuesday, we've got Cordova's. Oh. Um, I don't know if you were at that one. No. Literally one of my favorite videos out of all these. There's a lot of favorite videos, but yeah. they're, they're this uh, psychedelic uh, Americana jam band from Nashville slash L.A. And they're constantly on Cordova, tour. Isn't that a city in Spain? Um, I do believe so. <laughs> See that? <laughs> nice, yeah. Drop top. Um, <laughs> and they actually put out one of my favorite albums of 2018, ended up kind of being on tour in the area, and so I reached out with a real hard, uh, just tried to sell them. I was like, I'll get you an Airbnb, a shoot, a show. Wow. Like, I, I just, they had like a day like off between something. Green Bay and Alabama, and I was like, threw in all my chips and they did it and so this was october of last year and it was just so much fun and the video hasn't come out yet just because they were waiting on it when we finally got it done and then uh you know just how things get caught up i oh, yeah. i start getting all the ones out where people are begging them for it and they're not in uh, no particular hurry so uh, that's finally going to be released, um, and it's just it's just so good. And they play a Grateful Dead cover, which I'm stoked nice. about because that's a thing we're going to start incorporating into basically like challenging Covers. each band that comes in to play a Dead cover. 
So it would be a good way if you ever wanted to come back and just do one song. We want it to be in their own style. So if right. it's like a rock band, a, a jam band, a bluegrass band, like we don't want them to change. We want them to take it and make it their own, yeah. you know. So they were That's one of the idea. first who have done that. And I'm just, it's, I'm a deadhead and I'm going right. to, you know, create. There's a lot of deadheads uh, out there. Part of my community is always going to be uh, founded in like, you know, who I am and what I took from that. And I want to give back to that community. And uh, so this is just a way we've we've thought was fun. So we've only had a handful of bands do it so far because some of them, the, the shit gets booked so last minute right. that we it takes time can't to always. Yeah, yeah, like, but there's some bands that have them yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so anyways... Cordova's will be next week. Uh, then we have the Jam and Toast on Friday. Um, then the following Tuesday or Wednesday will be Big Dill and the Boys. Oh, um, nice. So Will yeah. from Big Dill is actually the one who told me about Cordova's. He sent, uh. sent it to me in a text like a year and a half ago. So I thought it would be cool to release them one after the yeah. other. Will's a good dude. Um, she's... Yeah, one of the nicest. Big He's great. The boys, they they played at Madison. Oh wait, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah the spectacular. The uh, oh, wh- at Bose Meadery. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I went. Uh, yeah, I was there. there. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, I know what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, they'll be on. Um, I think we're looking at like the seventeenth. Um, and then the uh. next two here here shows after that will be um. At the Winnebago in Madison on the nineteenth, cool. and that will be Sleepy Gaucho, Big Dill. Oh, I saw that. And then on Saturday we'll be Damn. in um, Milwaukee with that same lineup. Oh yeah. Plus, yeah, that's, uh, that's oh, cool. What the hell's the name of that? There's some band from, <laughs> I can't think of band. from somewhere else. <laughs> um. They are, yeah, so that'll be the 21st at Cactus Club. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, a handful of releases after the holidays. Um, we're, we're almost done with, like, Mystic Braves, Ceramic Animal, wow, yeah. um, Illiterate Light, The Go Rounds. There's just, like, a, yeah, it's a lot. It's a it's buttload. Heavy hitters. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so stoked. Because yeah. um, those, especially with those, yeah, and especially if you have a... You have good rollout strategies, and you have it. You have all these things coming in the pipe, and then there's things coming, 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 and and these bands, you know, have more notoriety, right? Like the local, yeah. the local bands is so. I think that's so important, right? You know, like support support Milwaukee, but to to like to even get even get some of the Milwaukee people on that same plat to build your platform to empower Milwaukee. You know, it's a two way. Yeah, yeah, I got a. I, and I've understood that from it's the a, very beginning. It's a global game, man. Yeah. I've understood that from the very beginning that, like, I always want to be a platform for local music. You know how much I support local music. It's like, yeah. so far in the shows that I've booked, it's been, like, 80% local, 20%, like, snag a national band and right. help promote a show. The videos now are about 50-50, but what I try to tell bands who just reach out, who've written one song, don't have an album, or, you know, like people reach out and I have to find a, a nice way to just tell them the truth. It's like, you need to prove yourself that like you're going to be around for a, prove to yourself and prove to me that you're going to be around for a minute. Because out of the, let's say, 50 local bands I've shot, 25 of them don't even exist anymore. Wow. That's, you know, yeah, a rough yeah. guess, but it, it's like, so I, I put a lot of time and money and energy. A lot of people put yeah, a lot of time, money, absolutely. and energy. Every video probably has 10 to 12 people that work on it, from the poly art to my co-producer to my sound. and right. all, the, all the So, like, when, when we, uh, you know, when we do that and then a band doesn't really promote it, it's just, it's made it where, you know, it's quality over quantity right. now. And, and like, can you smell that out a little bit now, a little better? Yeah, like, I mean, and we're having we, more we were, like well, just this probably wasn't a priority as much at the beginning, right? Yeah, like I always wanted music I liked, um, right. but there was definitely a, a point initially where it was like, 
uh, I just wanted to shoot as many as I could because I thought like if I have 25 shot, I can start asking for sponsorship. Or if right. I have, you know, like nobody's going to give me sponsorship when I've only done five or when I don't have views or subscribers. And so now we're just getting to that point where everything's starting to grow exponentially. Right. Like, you know, for for like a year, you'd get 10 subscribers a month. The next year, you'd right. get 20. Now we're getting like, I don't know, 70, 75 subscribers a month, which still is not like huge. But to notice like it, oh, yeah. it just like doof, 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 doof. growth, man. It's like this is exactly what, you know, like uh, it's a what is it? A marathon, not a sprint, <laughs> you know, that, and it's man. just like I I love that because I've enjoyed every step of the way there's yeah. not like an end game there's not a, a g ultimate goal like you know if uh my morning jacket or dead and company <laughs> That's not your goal. wanted to do like a session i would still think well we could get some like super group in here and then like you know no like i yeah. i genuinely just enjoy all of it um that, well they, they'd go closest they'd ever come through is alpine probably right like, uh i'm hoping that um we can get them and like uh fish on like some fall tour in the future at fiser yeah i is mean that where they gig in there's no way there's no chance in hell that uh dead and company would ever do this they just right yeah I mean, zero my morning jacket i think uh if you know the cards were played right in another know. like I mean, four or five do, years. They, like if you if you, was, I don't know if there's no no way in hell, right? I mean, if they or do they? I just, just don't think Dead and Company does stuff like that. They don't, they don't need to. They're gonna like sell twenty five thousand tickets at they every don't do show, video, no matter what. Like radio spots, and uh, stuff. rarely. Like they don't go to KXP so rarely. or Tiny Desk. No, or, yeah, no. no. Whereas okay. like My Morning Jacket doesn't have like a Tiny fish, Desk, the but fish like would, right? Maybe. I feel like Trey might. Um, I feel like f I feel like there's more of a chance with Fish than there is with Dead because Dead is not the same band. They're right, exactly. technically a cover band with many surviving members, um, right, right. whereas Fish is th the band right, and they the can do whatever band. they want and it's still fresh and new. Right. Um, right. As much as I I love Dead and Company, it's not they're not uh, doing new music. You know, whereas Fish is still putting out good music. Yeah, I know new some music. Of these that go to those. I was just talking to a buddy from my high school, and this guy. I remember, as, uh, I remember as a kid, I didn't really care for him that much. I the, just thought, this guy. Yeah, I thought he was kind of mean, and like a little, little like mean and disrespectful, and he just talked shit a lot. Sounds like an asshole. Right, that's what I thought. But then, uh, you know, I've been chatting with him these last few years. He was just I, a wook? Or, I'm just kidding. I, mean, <laughs> I think he went through a transformative process through being a wook, you know, like, because he said he went on a bunch of tour, tours with that, with Fish. And I think, you know, when you come out the other end, the compassion is a little different priority, you know? Like, it seems like... Hygiene isn't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I call myself a sophisticated wook. Yeah, clean hook, uh, clean hippie. No, I mean like I've, I only I'm heard the wook, the idea of a wook uh, a couple years ago from my the bassist John in in the Comrades. Mm -hmm. He's from Stevens. Well, he's from Fond du Lac, but he went to Stevens Point, and he's been in jam bands his whole life. And he brought it, and he goes and sees fish multiple times. You know, he just he just loves it. You know, that's just he's he's he is part of that culture. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned all oh, those they're just a bunch of wooks, and I was just like, what? Yeah. It's like they're wooks. Yeah, so, you know, dirty, the dirty, dirty crusty. Where does wook come from? Wookie? Or does it come from? I, yeah, I feel like it is. Big beards. Wookie's the hairy, hairy one, right? Yeah. I mean, it's Dread. like uh, dreads, and they usually have a dog that, you know, <laughs> they sleep in the dirt. They don't wear shoes. Right. It's like, <laughs> I wear shoes. Yeah. You know, I wash my hair. What's left of it? <laughs> I uh um but I like the same music and the same drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like there's Well, maybe not all the same drugs. But <laughs> yeah. I, well, that's what I mean about like this idea of compassion cuz it seems like there's definitely a lot of psilocybin being ingested and 
partaken in on most of these. Are you sure it's not silly psilocybin? <laughs> silly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> yeah, you should. If I get one thing out of this, it should be a new joke. <laughs> silly psilocybin. Okay. Someone, someone, I just think it's so silly. Someone must have thought of that. No. <laughs> but like, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the, the research, but I've been talking to some some of my friends who are neuroscientists. I've done plenty of research. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like clinical research. Oh, and it's none of that. It's probably uh, reaffirming and probably uh, validating maybe some of your experiences. Yes. Um, but what it what this research is saying is that plants are medicine. Yeah. Well, that's what the that's what the outcomes of some of this this cutting edge re- research is um, is saying that psilocybin actually is like reversing alzheimer's it's reversing people's eye like loss of eyesight loss of ear hearing loss loss of uh you know any chronic dege- brain degenerative disease it seems to like it seems to have incredible healing effects that's why they don't want us to have it well is this turning into joe rogan <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true, right? I mean, I look over there, but I know I'm supposed to look up there. I was just looking over at the computer. Sorry. So, so fairy frequency left. She said, "Wishing you both a fantastic week," and something about "Nice to meet you, Ryan." Nice to meet you. And then there's someone who just said, "Yo, how we doing?" Pretty good. How you doing? SQM. Doing good. SQM. Um, but the, it seems, it, yeah, I mean, j- this is kind of modeled after the Joe Rogan experience, to be totally honest. Like, I, I fucking love that show. And I like that it's just conversations. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have. <laughs> but this <laughs> is a little better setup. He's got someone who is working. Like, I have to do all the things, like everything I do, you know. He's got some. You I would have, do that anyways. <laughs> no, I had, one one color cast I had, or actually two color casts. I think I had uh, friends um, being on the keyboard over there and swapping between cameras. Oh, it's because we just have us two here. Look, you know, but if there's a way to swap the cameras, like let's see, this might not work. Like going like that, right? There's you. There's me. Look at my third eye pine cone. And. I didn't realize you had a feather. Yeah. But the point point being is the... They are opening up. Like, I think the they don't want you to... They they don't want us to have it is, I think, absolutely true. And I think they primarily are... Primarily, I think, one of the biggest uh, forcing functions against it is the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical Well, I think that's all it is. Like, any scientists or... It was you know, banned from even being researched. Yeah, no, recently. I mean that's it's like anybody who's actually doing the research, any scientist who is an actual scientist who is open to research and findings and stuff is going to realize that it's a positive thing and not a well, negative that's what they're thing. Realizing. And, and it's, it's uh, overwhelming, actually. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, this is a little bit better than an SSRI. It's like, no, this is this is factors. Do, mm-hmm. you know factors better like they're the yeah the evidence is uh, evidence is overwhelming and so yeah. what was it did oregon you hear that mom <laughs> 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 no it's just like you know obviously my mom knows about mushrooms more than i do she did them <laughs> once in high school <laughs> <laughs> There's a 50-50 chance she'll watch this. So <laughs> depends on uh, what's going on at home today. No, I mean, it's just funny. It's like, yeah, I fucking love mushrooms. They're beautiful. And yeah, uh, yeah. where do I sign? <laughs> yeah, It's I mean, like... Well, it's decriminalized it's, in Denver now, right? Yeah. And I think it's, uh, it's just going to happen like the cannabis. It's just going to... The floodgates Which are is open. like, it is I hope gateway. it happens it is a gateway in, drug, in but time to legalization. Uh, before we all die because of flooding yeah, and think, global warming think, uh, and storms. All the men fire. need to come together, get, take some mushrooms. All the women need to come together, take some mushrooms. You know, and I think we'll see a much different outcome in the world. Oh, yeah. Well, because think of how, cre- like, 
there's all these. It really things. just talking is about the you, control of. I mean, them. you're talking yeah. about glo- climate change and all the all these disastrous cataclysmic possibilities that are coming down the pipe, right? They're if there's the any, if, what's that? They're in the pipe. <laughs> They're already in the pipe, and that's the idea. Is like psilocybin is only like now it's a competitive edge in Silicon Valley. Like if you're microdosing in Silicon Valley, you are a little bit more creative. You're a little bit more open, and that's a competitive edge. So it's it's not just, ooh, well, let's get like let's trip, yeah, bro. No, it's it's it it's it's med- it's medicinal, but it's also like it it um it can be a supplement to your life just like anything else, and you don't have to trip balls. And actually, everything was, in moderation, you know, it's like. Well, you know what Oscar Wilde said? He said, everything in moderation, especially moderation. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like too much of anything is going to right. rattle. I've definitely met some people where it's like maybe a little too much. Yeah, and they're also probably not doing it for the right reason. And there doesn't even need to be a right reason necessarily. Cause there can be healthier reasons. Some, you know, for me, it's it, it's like, fun and creativity and you know silliness and uh it's not it's not i'm not necessarily thinking about like what this does to help with any potential depression or so you're not taking it medicinally it's recreationally yeah um but like then there are you know what i would consider borderline is doing like a uh a meditation, right. um, like a. The past couple times I've well, done it, going I've, to a music concert is like kind of a meditation. Like, oh, totally. Like you, you may not be. I think all these people who people who take it recreationally, they, they're t- they also they don't really fully maybe understand that. that why, yeah, that is you medicinal are, for yeah, you. Like when you get together with people and you are in this state of consciousness and not and around music mm-hmm. in a certain community, like. Though you are you are fulfilling these like desires and needs that humans have, and people are connecting at deep spiritual and psychic, psychic levels. So my, you know, I most of the first times that I started doing it was was out and about, or out with friends, or out at right. shows, or out at festivals. The most recent couple times, I've tried to make it a more deeper inward, maybe not medicinal, but like spiritual. Right. And like pathfinding yeah. sort of thing where I've done a, I love it with music, but the yeah. past couple of times I've done just a meditation, a manifest yeah. your dream career meditation. And then the rest of the night has been silent. And it's been, you know, the goal is to to do it on like a full moon or something where like, right. and I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, geez, like, oh, geez. yeah, you could see, <laughs> you could see, yeah like why the ancient people were able to communicate with other places and other times and understand time and, uh, you know, aliens, whatever. Like, and just my little tiny apartment, the things that I've, you know, and and just a few times, you know, I don't, I don't overdo it. you. You know, it's like, whoa. Yeah, we're supposed to do these. <laughs> like, yeah, I think this this I, is evolution or or adaptation or how your right brain. Well, it's you know. from from the earth, right? I mean, and that's the that's the thing is, I mean, there's things in the earth that'll kill you, and there's things there that can help you, like food. Like we were talking about about diet, like food is is most important. What you consume is who you are. Yeah, and and if I, I I do believe that I think I think there's is a possibility too that mushrooms are sentient creatures, that they are fully aware too of their role and that you know in in a, in their own way you know per, you know that's this is just there's no there's no proof about sen- it's hard to to prove sentience and something but like mm-hmm. it's from what I've read from about them like the largest organisms on Earth are mushrooms because they all they are go so deep yeah, and this, yeah. this, the mycelium networks are so they can go for miles and miles and miles and miles. And we're talking about one, technically it's just one creature mm-hmm. that's miles long. Yeah. And I mean, I think there are some trees that do that too. But it's like a buffet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All you can eat. Yeah. Ugh. But, but 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that I've, I've always been interested in in stuff like that because I've I've read a lot of. Well, I had ex- I had psychedelic experiences when I was in high school and in college and stuff, and I've always had in crazy like sleep paralysis dreams and stuff since I was a kid. So like, I had psychedelic experiences all the time, and I had major surgery when I was in high school. I had my uh, sternum broken with a hammer, and uh, med- medic. Uh, it was a I had like a chest surgery where I had a sunken chest, and they basically that yeah they broke my sternum in with this like hammer and then they cut two holes into my sides and they put a metal bar in there concave concave and then they flipped it convex drilled it into my rib cage and kept it there for two years and and then they took it out uh but i had holy fuck yeah and i never want to hear that story again <laughs> well i had an out-of-body experience i was there was a lot of drugs involved in this you know situation so mm-hmm. so like they they um they gave me Valium to just like calm me down from the thing, but I had you know hadn't eaten in twenty four hours, right? So like most people who understand like taking any type of drug on an empty stomach is usually much more powerful because um, there's nothing for it to like bind. Do with. you have any left? <laughs> <laughs> it was it, dude. It was the only time I ever took Valium. Turn up the Valium. <laughs> it was the only other time I did it. Only time I ever had ingested Valium, and it was. I was just a goofy ass motherfucker, just like smiling about everything, and and uh, and then they put me down on this table, and I was just like being carted into this room. There's all these different doctors that were doing crazy shit, and there's all these tools and stuff. But I was just like, Ooh. and yeah. and I lied down, and then they gave me laughing gas, so they gave me then they gave me nitro on top of that. So then I was on both uh, Valium and nitro, and the doctor, I'm just fucking like, I I didn't even know why I was laughing. I, then I became aware I was laughing. Like, but my, I, then I, I just felt my shoulders going like this. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Oh, God. And I just was like, oh my God, I'm laughing. And, and, and then the doctor goes, oh, I love it when, you know, the patients are laughing like this because I can say a lame joke and they'll have to laugh. And he said something lame. And I just remember thinking with all the power in my, of, of will that I had to, to stop my body from laughing. And I did. And I stopped and I just, and then all the doctors started laughing and then I started laughing too. I thought it was hilarious. Damn. But then they gave me. Then they gave me. They're like, "You're gonna feel a little pinch." Then it was, "You're gonna feel a little pinch." Was, You're gonna feel a little. And everything just swirled in, and and all like everything just kind of swirled. In. And then boom, I like had out of body experience. I popped out my body. I looked down. I saw myself on the operating table. I saw the doctors. I could hear. Ugh. I could hear the clinking of all the tools and stuff. And and they were my all, chest hurt, has hurt for this whole story. <laughs> just, you know. Well, it was just it's just crazy what you know, like these experiences and that that out of body experience I would have I would relive in my sleep paralysis and in lucid dreams and stuff. I relive that over and over. Like in my room, I would be able to pop out of my body and float around my room and do the same type of thing. But it was crazy. It was like how powerful some of those drugs are is because when I got out of the anest- anesthesia, I sat up completely straight freaking the fuck out i was just i woke up just <gasps> and, and just like look i was like what what and there's just nurses there like it's okay it's okay and i started thinking about that after i'm like they literally broke my sternum and and had a I, there was a metal bar inside me and like it was all stitched up and i sat up completely like like just terrified because it was as soon as i f- i swirled up i swirled back down and then i woke up and then i was in the icu for like a week and i had epidural like the morphine straight into my spinal cord Ugh. and dude morphine is fucked like fucked i i just moving would get, make me throw up they'd be like okay we're gonna try and sit up today and i was like i can sit up i sat up right after the thing and it wasn't about the pain it was about the morphine like the morphine i sat up and i just started puking like bile it's like yellow because i didn't eat anything because you know they're just oh, feeding me man. through a tube or whatever and it's crazy and as soon as I got off the morphine, I could walk around. It was crazy. It was like, yeah, morphine. Like you can you can understand why the opioids opiates is such an epidemic. And like those ideas yeah. of the opium den. I understand that now because you don't even want to move if you're on opiate. You can't move. You get sick. Yeah. You literally get motion sickness by just walking from one place to the next. And I mean, after the surgery, I had like a bunch of refills on on uh, Percocet, you know. And so I had. You know, I watched all of Scorsese's movies. <laughs> and that was awesome. I wrote a lot of poetry. Like that was kind of cool. But opioids, are, yeah, that's out of all the drugs. Like 
I could see, and I'm even when someone say, "Oh, like," if there's someone says something about Percocet or some or something, I'll be like, "Like, I I can feel how someone would be addicted to that." But I, luckily, I never was, it, and I never did. But people say that you know it's a total lie though too about how you get addicted to these, to especially even those 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 do have the potential for high potential for addic- for physical addiction, but the whole idea of taking it once and getting addicted is total nonsense. That's total nonsense. Yeah, I you know how much heroin quote unquote like because her- they all turn into the same thing in your body. They all turn into morphine, in in the body, and you know and it it all turns you know maybe it's slightly different, but out of all the morphine that I had and all those Percocets that I had, I'm not addicted. You know, think of how many people use more, have morphine every day. Yeah. And they're not addicted to it. Right? Yeah. So I mean, there's it's, other it's factors for sure. That it's, it's just like the one and done, like they taught you in dare or whatever. Yeah. Dare is a bunch of nonsense, dude. You know, the, my associate, I remember in college, my associate, I actually professor. got into drugs because of dare. Yeah. Well, that's, he, he's it was a triple dog dare. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Damn. Yeah, I wrote that joke a long time ago, but I felt like that was a good opportunity. <laughs> that, was, no, that was perfect execution. You know? No, I was gonna say that it, that the people, the kids who took dare, are more likely to be drug abusers. That's a real study. That's a real fact. Like, that's fucked. Rebellious Actually, little bastards. Well, because I think people could tell. I think they knew that they were being lied to, right? Like, I knew I was being. The alcohol thing was like, okay, this seems fair, but then they'd say weed burns holes in your brain and i remember being like i've read stuff from people who don't say that well yeah they're like the most Look smart people laughing now they're the smartest people on you know the, the smartest authors and and artists and you know creators and even they even said thomas jefferson smoked weed you know like like these motherfuckers have been doing it for forever yeah and, and so the fact that it you know i mean here in wisconsin we don't even have medical shit we still don't even have medical what the fuck dude i my, i got a lot of family members who have pretty debilitating diseases and they have no oppor- they have nothing they have nothing it's stupid it's crazy. yeah i mean you're preaching to the choir when yeah i know I, like, <laughs> i'm not gonna get too into it but yeah it's but like, i agree yeah I think, <laughs> I think i think there's a shift the shift is happening it's happening and the money the money has been speaking about mm-hmm. how how it can be monetized and that's unfortunately that's how a lot of people think um but i mean illinois they're, they expunged, what, like 800,000 people's records? Something yeah. like that? Yeah. 700 at least. And they're, at New Year, it's going to be fully legal. And not only that, but it's all going towards like the most impoverished areas of Illinois. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Like, you could change the world. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, it's like, uh, it's that simple. You know, like, Everyone Denver, yeah. they've been able to, you know, fix things, throw money at schools. Like, it's like, oh, we have too much money. We don't know what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, they got it's a like, refund. Taxpayers got a, yeah. taxpayers got a refund because it's, it's like, too much money. It's like... The first year. It wasn't uh, much, but... <laughs> Damn. Yeah, we could really use that in our country. Um, now we got someone talking about mushrooms. Uh-oh. Honey mushrooms. Amalaria. Do you know that? Do you know what honey mushroom is? Um, I don't, but when I was in New York, my brother gave me uh, mushroom honey. I didn't oh. get fucked up from it. It wasn't enough. So psilocybin he's, is he's attenuated a serotonin. I don't know what that means. I know what serotonin is at one of the main uh, so hormones. So is it like, uh, I kind of missed it, but I know that there's like a honey that you can lick and it's got a psychedelic effect. Was, that's oh. not, this is a type of mushroom, right? That this. Yeah, he, well, he, he said some scientific name and then he said, yikes. So maybe it's a, maybe it's a scary one. Maybe, <laughs> you know, what I've heard, I've heard also for people who are afraid of tripping, which, you know, is, is in its own way helpful for certain therapeutic things. But because you're just essentially your subconscious can become melded with your conscious and, you know, you're dissolving a lot of, you know, you're integrating a lot of these parts of your psyche that are normally separate. And a lot of people have issues, myself included, you know, with the shadow of yourself and your ego and your id and all those things. Like people have issues with understanding them and fully being fully being present and fully being honest with who they are. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that by 
dissolving some of the barriers between that. You get to see a little bit more about the destructiveness of yourself, the hatred in yourself, the fear, all that shit. You're face to face with that motherfucker. Yeah. And and so like that that can be very therapeutic. But it seems very scary for some people who may not be um may may not have the courage to to face it. Um but there are these apparently I've been hearing from have you ever heard of uh Paul Stamets? So this is I definitely have heard the name, but Paul I don't Stamets know. Paul Stamets is where. just like the mushroom guy. He owns fungi.com and he oh. he's like the lead expert from the beginning of time. He tells this crazy story on the Joe Rogan experience where he was like a little kid and took like I mean so some exorbitant amount of mushrooms when he shouldn't have done on an empty stomach and he climbed and he climbed up at the top of this big tree all the way to the top and he stayed up there while a storm came through. Yeah, I've heard this story. Yeah. And it and he said he had a stutter and he had all this shit before and then he was like completely healed of it and like he's just like I know I now am a servant of the mushroom <laughs> and then just studied his whole life doing mushrooms. But he said that there's all these these mushrooms now that they're finding that are psilocybin analogs. And what that means is like they have the same effect physically and cognitively as a like a psilocybin mushroom that but it doesn't make you trip. So it's like when we ban these research, we're not just banning the like we're 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 completely removing ourselves from even studying these things because think of how much that could affect you know how that could be over the counter shit, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that people people could just be putting in and well, it could be like reishi or any other yeah, mushroom everything. that is just straight health mushroom. Right. I, t- I have a little mushroom. I there's take, some take of some... the m- most. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah people eat ashwagandha or ashitaba or I don't know. One of those is yeah. a mushroom. <laughs> I've had both things. I think one's like a root and one's a mushroom. Yeah. And then, yeah, reishi and uh, there's hundreds. Yeah, and you can eat them too and they taste pretty good, you know? like Morel. Like, oh. Dude, I had... Uh, dude, morels are so good. Uh, at Birch and Butcher, back to the restaurants. You could shout out all these people and they'll share this. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Birch and Butcher back in like April... I had one of the tastiest things I've eaten in the entire year, which was a morel toast. So it was like, you know, little cooked morels with a morel gravy on top of, I don't know, maybe some morels, sourdough or some some sort of bread that was toasted to perfection. It was. Yeah, morels. I are, wish it was on the menu for longer. It was one of the best tastiest things. It's because they're only around for for in the spring, mm-hmm. and people go nuts. Yeah. I have a buddy who talks about how he took mushrooms and then he went mushroom hunting and he walked into the forest and he's an outdoorsman. Um, he spear fishes and bow hunts and shit. And so a he, real man. Yeah, he knows his shit. You know, so he, so he, at least compared to me, but he, he, uh, he went out, he, at least he told the story, he went out and he's just walking through the woods trying to look for mushrooms and then he sees fucking Bambi, a little fawn in a deer, in a deer nest, just curled up with, fucking sunbeam poking through the 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 um the tree leaves with like butterflies flying around in the and thing and he's just like oh my god and just on his little mushroom hunt sounds beautiful yeah and he's like yeah i uh <laughs> i was like Damn, i want to go find that. some but i also just wish birch and butcher would cook that same thing up again yeah, there's a few. Good I'll go. Maybe I'll go this next year if the weather's nice. I'll go. You know, you just spring, got. I just got to find hunting. someone. That's why that's, I'm like happy to be talking with my buddy because it's like I want to be. I want to learn how to fucking forage for morels. I want to learn how to. It's like, all in knowing where to go. I think. Yeah, you got to know where. And I mean, when I was in Ireland, they they, they called when. them mushy, mushy season, and that was when everyone would go out in the, <gasps> into the Wicklow woods and into the into the mountains. They were just really ancient mountains so they weren't really big um they're like the ozarks maybe and and they went out mushy hunting and they were yeah they'd be looking for psilocybin you know so it's like everyone does it everywhere everyone. yeah although in ireland the, the biggest drug of choice is mdma and that's something that's been a really interesting research on that and part of i mean the irish are known for their like some crippling oppression and depression right like the suicide rates there are pretty bad 
and it doesn't surprise me that, you know, like there's no chance in these like types of why people choose the certain types of drugs and, you know, why people are doing it. Like there's no, I think people ultimately know what they need for themselves and stuff. And like yeah. the fact that that's the biggest drug in Ireland is not very surprising because of all the PTSD mm -hmm. in the, in the genes yeah. from just thousands of years of oppression in their culture, you know, like it's, I would imagine it could be very useful to, for healing a population. Yeah. And now they're like pretty woke, you know, like, and they're, and they're, you know, leading the way in a lot of social, um, movements, you know, I loved Dublin when I went. Yeah. Dublin's awesome. It was surprisingly like shocked me how cool it was just cause it was like somewhere I added on, as a cheaper place to fly into <clears throat> on my trip on the, and I had a friend who was living there. And so I was like, it wasn't a place where I was like super, super excited to visit, basically. Yeah. And then I just had a great time. The people were super chill. The yes. food was good. Irish, the, the Irish are super chill. They do have beautiful. an issue with talk about the beer. The beer definitely, it felt uh, it felt pretty comfortable there for me because it's like, oh, beer controls your city. <laughs> like, I was like, I get that, you know. And people, I know a place like that. <laughs> and that's what was interesting. I was like, wow, I've never. The Germans would drink a lot, but. The Irish drink differently, like they they all they all drink differently. But um, yeah, Guinness. The Irish have a very c confusing relationship with Guinness because they've almost been brainwashed to to think that Guinness is like the best and everything. But actually, like Guinness has been part of like they have a monopoly. You know, they have monopolistic tendencies, and they've you know they had whole marketing campaigns that are like touted as like brilliant marketing, but it's just. Straight up propaganda. Like, have you ever seen yeah, those no, posters? I mean, Guinness is good for you. Oh, totally. Guinness is trash beer. <laughs> it's like dark water. It's not I mean, good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, you and I drink a lot too? of beer. Yeah, I mean, let's just be honest. If you've had a good dark beer, you wouldn't like Guinness. <laughs> if, I think the Irish if, would disagree with you, but I I've had good Guinness and I've had bad Guinness. I'll tell you that much. The like, one that you had at the place was good, and everyone you've had since then is bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ones here are not that great. Yeah, um, that's true. They do have a cool little ball in there. Yeah, in the, the in the cans. That's fun. Yeah, those those they don't still don't do it. They found a Far way in. to take a little bit of beer out of each can for profit, and that's by putting a ball in there. Wow. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a giant megalithic corporation. You know, like they. They it's actually they have false bottoms in the can. I'm just kidding. Like the big tall can, half of it's just air. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> it's not true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would have believed you. I mean I know that I could tell that you were believing me. Because it I is I you. mean it is a giant yeah, I think the the same company We'd find out at some point. The same We'd company who can. owns them like I think also owns like Jose Cuervo, Jack Daniels. Um All these or no, guys no. are dead. Not Jack Daniels. What's that rum? Captain Morgan. Like all the like they own. I forget what they're called. Um, but they they're just this giant fucking corporation that owns like a huge. There's company. only like four corporations out there. Yeah, total. they own everything. <laughs> I mean, this is going live on YouTube, right? Which is owned by Google. Which is owned by God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you, he'll you sponsor. Google, yeah, God should sponsor. I wonder what he could pony up some fucking cash. No, he runs a cashless business now. Oh yeah, just just prayers, thoughts, thoughts and prayers too. Yeah, thoughts and prayers. Penny, penny for your thought. You've heard that, right? I've heard that. I don't know if I want a penny though. Yeah. He said, "Support Maps Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies." Have you ever heard of that? Maps. Say it again. Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. I have heard of that. We should get them to sponsor uh, here. Here. That'd be pretty dope. Get them to sponsor Psychfest. Yeah. <laughs> That's genius. Or at least uh, bring them in. And like have them have a booth or something. You know, Do, is there a local branch? I don't know. Are they all? It's Who's global. Tales of Gore. Tales of Gore. Do you know if there's a 
a Milwaukee or southeastern Wisconsin branch of that organization, let us know. Yeah, the the yeah psychedelic experiences is something that's probably it's universal. It's universal. People like to pretend like it's not like a that it's just something that is in your you know you just made it make it up and it doesn't have any meaning and it's and it's, it's how we connect to the place we we're from where we live it's like duh all the ancient people who were tapped into this shit were tripping balls yeah jesus probably too it's the way it is yeah no the mystic tradition that's something i've been reading more recently is like with the with the the like the removal and particularly with men is because and I, this is a question for you maybe as a man I'm a, i mean i don't want to assume <laughs> I'm a but, man. <laughs> but like when did you feel like you were a man? Um still right, not even sure. Waiting. <laughs> uh what was the most manly moment of my life? Well, not I most manly <laughs> moment. When <laughs> no, when like you, when I felt when, you, when I lived on my when own. When you're not a boy, you're a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it was like when I had my first apartment probably so like 18, 19 ish. Because before that, I mean, like having a job, having a car, you know, being I, separate from your family, b- b- yeah, relying think, on yourself. Yeah. Like when I, you know, the point at which I never had to ask for money again and I've supported myself since then. So yeah, uh, 18, 19 yeah. ish. So do you think, do you think, uh, but do you, th- do you think with that situation, was there still boyness? Like, do you still think... Well, I mean, and that's the thing. I was, like, always always learning. Yeah. Always, like... That's why, like, it's almost like... I still do a lot of things that aren't manly. <laughs> that, that, are, that I still could grow up and... Uh, like, I don't know how to... I guess I maybe I do know how to change my own. No, I don't know how to change it. I, I go somewhere and get it done. I've you know? seen videos of how to do it. So, like, maybe that's a boyish thing. Well. But it's also, it's like, you know, trickle down. I need. I want to pay someone to do this. I mean, you're paying for convenience. I don't know if that's necessarily a boyish thing. I guess what I'm getting at is, like, there is no... You're talking about these ancient traditions, right? These mystic... Mm-hmm. That oh, they like... They have the, clear rituals mm-hmm. for manhood. Women, women have it's a like clear killing an animal, going and living yeah. in the woods for There's three days. There's a story I heard where people, like this one tribe of, I think it was Native Americans, I, I can't remember where, but the they would they wouldn't tell the boy what was happening, and they'd just say, "Today you're gonna die," and they and 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 or they'd tell each other, "Like today this boy will die." I think that's Mormonism. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what their what their initiation ceremony, but they they would take. A boy, chug they, a coke. They put him through this situation, you know, and they put him a, put him in a pretty traumatic and humiliating experience, right? And and then when it would be all over, it would be they would say, "The boy is not dead. Here lies a man." So and and, and it was to just go th- and I think it's for the psyche. They were very aware of how the, like these be probably through the understanding of you know the the shamans and the mystics who would be able to, you know, all these ancient cultures, even the ancient Christians and shit, like they, they knew this shit, like the, that you need to have these, these, uh, initi- these rituals and these circumstances in which you can actually move forward with your psyche as a man, like part of, part of the initiation. And there, there's, I've been thinking about that more and asking more people about it, what they feel. And that's what it seems to be like. There's just all these little pseudo rituals or like pseudo ceremonies. Like my, I started thinking about it when I moved back. Yeah. From college or when I came back for the first time from being in college, my dad's like, Hey, you want a beer? I was like, Oh, I'm a man now, I guess. Yeah. Like that's, that's it. Like that's, that's the ceremony. There's no like, Cleansing of the what boy. What do you want, a quinceanera? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's too late for me now, right? I mean, but like... It's I'm, too late. I mean, just for... Well, <laughs> right, because I've already become a man and there's things in my in my life. Yeah, like I'm when you're self-sufficient and you get, you get your shit done and you do it and, you know, and you can, you know, be be a mature masculine creature. Like the... the 
but for for the other generations sake like for man mankind and i th- and that's what this i think this idea of patriarchy the idea of patriarchy is the boy psychology like no mature masculine person is going to perpetuate a patriarchy you know i think that the only a boy an insecure boy would do that you know what i mean and if you think about it there's no there's none of these rituals there's none of these experiences there's none of this like manhood and this this uh, this like uh understand like think about it like my at least in my parents generation and men wouldn't even they were emotionally um oppressed like they they wouldn't like my dad barely even says shit about anything about how he feels ever ever yeah so like how suck so how how can how can uh how can you expect you know how it's only it only it only seems like rational and nat- and natural that there would be imbalances in in the male hierarchies is because there's no like real there's no real structure to it that of like ma- breeding mature masculine creatures mm-hmm. there's, like everyone's walking around with and no no offense to video games and like cartoons and stuff but like grown ass men are you know carrying around you know lots of different uh uh, you know, video game characters and and cartoon characters like that's their life. That's who they identify with. And maybe I'm just being mean at this point, but I don't know. I don't. I just see that as potentially something that could be like. Are you calling me Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Sonic. Don't get me wrong. You know, I have a Star Wars shirt. You know, I like all that shit. I love watching the movies and I love the games. And I think it's b- br- brilliant narrative, brilliant storytelling, myths and art and stuff like. Don't get me wrong, but like. If that's your, if those are your male figures, right? Like these are, these are just like, I think there's a big imbalance. Is all yeah, no, I, I agree. It is an interesting thing to think about just, yeah, who and what you learn from and how they, because like, yeah, I feel like that was something where my dad didn't necessarily like he wasn't like a hunter fisher type who like tried to teach me that or a car guy who tried to teach me that or uh, a feelings guy who talked about that so I've somehow managed to just you know I think it's just within me to be a more open talk about my feelings sort of sort of guy uh but I'm still also not going to, you know. I mean, just because you're not a hunter or fisherman doesn't mean you're not a man. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, just no. like that. That's I'm just saying one like aspect of that's man. that's like one of those avenues. Right. There's like the car dads. There's <laughs> yeah. the, the deer dads. <laughs> the deer dad. There's the and, there's you the, know, I guess like mine alcoholic. was mo- m- mostly <laughs> like sports. Maybe sports. that was kind of. Did the, you do a lot of sports growing up? Yeah. What'd you do? Uh, Tennis? No, uh, like. Track? Basketball, football, oh, okay. golf. You football. Huh? You play football? Yeah, I played football in like uh, middle school and high school and basketball. Where did you grow up? Uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh, shit. Yeah. So that was where I went to. Well, it was like Utah, then uh, like so Salt Lake, then Austin, then Phoenix, basically. Bef- and then when I was old enough, it was when I moved to New York oh. by myself. Doing it up, dude. Did it up? Well, I, I, that's a pretty. That's a. That, that's a pretty. Uh, I could understand how that would be more a, a clearer, um, man, hood, coming to manhood thing. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess because you're kind of you're kind of rebirthing yourself in that. I had. Place. I did have an apartment for like my f- a year or something in Arizona, separate from my parents, and then I happened. I had an opportunity to move to New York. I guess I remember the moment that I turned into a man. No, so like my be- my best friend you look and down I, and you're like, yeah. ah. <laughs> my best friend and I uh, moved out to New York like the day after Christmas, like 2004, and just like January going to the 17th. Big city. So not even a full month later, January 17th, he packed up and left oh, shit. and moved back, and there was no way I was There's going back. Like been. I had quit a job. So many- 
why do that if you're like, just gonna go back? Yeah, because you know, I th- I ultimately think it's the way that it needed to happen so I could blossom, and maybe I wouldn't have moved out there on my own. I I never like resent it, or I'm uh, I think yeah, it worked out the way it's supposed do, to. You know, but I remember like calling my mom like after he le- literally he tried to sneak out and do it like he like took stuff down and like shipped it and then like came back up and like as was he was he leaving to yeah I'm sure oh, he was embarrassed. Man. Um, he like told me, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be going back to Arizona. I just, you know, I don't know if I could do it. And there's a taxi waiting for me downstairs. So I got to go. And this was like my best friend for like four years, but you know, he was paying which, rent like, too, probably years. right. Well, so here's the thing. His mom, ha- they had made the offer that they would pay moving costs, six months rent and broker's fees, which would have saved me like 10 to 12,000 bucks. If I would move then with him rather than finish school and move. So I quit school and I had bought and sold a home at 18. So I had like oh, oh wow. like $40,000 in the bank. And so I, uh, I was like, you know what? If I'm going to save this money, yeah, I'll go now. Like I'll yeah. just go to NYU. Or I'll do, uh, you know, whatever. So then when he left. But yeah, I remember like calling my mom that morning and just like crying. <laughs> it's the last time I cried. <laughs> just kidding. No, but she, she, I was just like, holy shit. Like, I'm alone Abandoned. in New York, and I did not expect to be alone. I expected shit. to be with my best friend. But then, you know, you have to Those are the make moments. friends. Those are the moments and it's that, like that so much better. Because right? if I wouldn't. Then you figure out if you're a man or not. Right yeah. there. Right there. Because if he would have been there, we wouldn't have had to make other friends. And now I became right. like the friendliest guy, you know, like Casper. <laughs> the ghost? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a ghost, but it's hard to tell looking at that <laughs> right now. <laughs> you need to yeah. put like slumber on this or Sephia or I'm just thinking of Instagram. Oh, yeah. uh, I think there is a way to do it. I just look too pale. I think it's the skylight. Yeah, it definitely is the skylight. Does everyone know that you have a nice skylight in your studio? Some people. The people have been Now here. they do. I, You know, when I came in here, the landlord was like, oh, I originally thought about putting three skylights in. I'm just checking my and I was like, what? texts. Well, then why, the why did uh, why did you tell me that? Now I'm just get, always going to look at the skylight and think about what it could be like if there was three of them. But one, one's good. It's fine. Three would be too bright in here right now. <laughs> too bright? I, don't know. I think it would be more balanced. Like because right now you're just you're just getting a full blast. That is true. And I did turn that. I try. I turned that top light on just to make it try to balance it out a little bit. And sometimes I can get that other light. I put it on the other side, and then you know it's all about balancing out the light. You know. My friend texted me and said, "YouTube adds ten pounds." <laughs> and I just want to say, no, uh, you just haven't seen me in a month. I gained ten pounds <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> I mean, at least I've, ten pounds. Yeah, I've been I've been uh, a lot of food. I've been monitoring my my food and my weight more recently. I'm trying to get better at that. I have been talking about doing that for it's <clears> hard, <throat> like six months. It's hard to keep track of all that shit. <coughs> like, well, I'm we dating a, a like tiny little person. <laughs> she weighs like a hundred pounds, and she, you know, likes food, and we like food, and. So it's like, I'm not going to let her out eat me. <laughs> I definitely always know what usually ends up happening is we choose something, we'll like split it, and then I'll eat mine, and then I'll eat half of hers because she's little. And that's the that's the uh, Why don't you just split? relationship diet. Why don't you just split one? Because I don't want to eat just one thing. I want to eat two things every time I go out. Yeah, I like variety. I'm not a Taurus. Do Taurus is like, well, I just found out recently, I think I'm a Libra moon. Oh. Uh, or I think. Libra rising or Libra moon, dude. Big difference. Because I just found out my, I just found out my birth time. And so there's a lot of question as to whether, what my birth time was. So rising or ascending is your, if that's Libra, then it would mean like people would assume or think you're a Libra based on your outer... Libra moon. 
Okay, so that's more like it, what it says, controls the your rising? feelings. Here. I'm, I'm not in I haven't been in that stuff. I, all I know is that I tell people I'm a Taurus, and then they have all these preconceived notions about who I am. I've even had people be like, we can't be friends, and then walk away. I'd be like, wow. It's like, miss, that's just my sun sign. Wow, you got a lot of earth in here. Capricorn, 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 Capricorn. Taurus, which we all know. Um, yeah, I don't know because I've heard people say things about like, oh yeah, the Taurus, they're they're driven and they're you know loyal and stuff. Um, but then also people say, well, they love really fancy things and they love material things and stuff. And it's just like, well, that's not me at all. But you know, it's always like, where are you getting this information from? Who's deciding? Who's who's deciding where this shit is? Is it is it from the, the real people the, or is it from just the, some uh, fucking horoscope daily dot com? The uh, yeah, there's a lot of Capricorn, right? Matrix that we're in is who decided this. You so Merc with R, right. does that mean rising? So, I'm, I'm wondering. Uh, yeah. I'm not the biggest. So Aries, you would be a fire as you're rising. Mercury, I don't know. Let me call Jenny. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> She's the one who's taught me everything I know. Yeah, I don't know what my friend my friend's been showing me some of this stuff and Yeah. I mean You're definitely a Taurus. Very much so. Anybody who's done thirteen albums thirteen <laughs> years in a row is motherfucking Taurus. Yeah. All right. You're not a Virgo. Because I like you. And the Capricorn is a little more cold hearted. <laughs> but are those are the three earth signs. You're definitely Taurus. Because Libra is that fire or is that earth? Uh air. Oh air. That's what I am. Oh. That's the October babies. So they're the the balance, the scales. Because it's all like all the different because all the different planets control different characteristics, right? And then yeah, it's so they all you know. have they all have elemental values, but they also have like characteristic values, and then so they all come together. So like when someone tells you their sun sign, it doesn't really mean jack. Like no, because it's, it's, it's a little bit of yeah, you're a little bit of all your things. Yeah, you have it, to know. It doesn't, you know, it's not that it doesn't mean jack because it's technically it the overarching thing that you can identify with, and I very much do. But I know plenty of people who don't identify with their sun sure. sign. Or they're rising. You're, you're. It all depends on the definition. A mix of the whole thing. Yeah, like I and, said, you know, I've read people have said like, oh, Tauruses are so. Like when people talk about Tauruses and they don't know I'm a Taurus, and then and then I'll be they'll just describing they'll be describing people who are completely like have completely different value system than me, you know, completely and totally different personality traits. Like yeah, pet like. The pet, thing I know most and, about Taurus. Or the thing that I'm that I find to be the most true through uh, a lot of the Tauruses that I know. My little brother is one, one of my best friends. They seem to like be really good at um, choosing one thing and like perfecting it, and be like that, knowing young that that's what they want to do. Sure. Like one of my best friends, Oriana, she wanted to be a primatologist and like i don't know that's like dope. second grade and that's what she does at the zoo here like uh, yeah. work work with bonobos or like my you know my brother like just wanted to get into film and has just like dove head first like yeah. i don't i don't know it's a thing where like for me a libra isn't great with choosing one thing and it's like <laughs> so I'm constantly trying to do 10 different things at once. Uh, and I, I love them all. And I, you know. I don't know. Because I, I, I feel that, well, although if I am also have a Libra moon, right? But yeah, like, no. And that's the so, thing. Is can, it's cause, like. Because I guess I do. that I do. Uh, I would resonate with that. Check out your human design. That's what you need to look up. Human design? Human design is. I personally feel like it's a even deeper kind of more more uh interesting thing because it seems to be even more accurate than like i believe astrology is pretty accurate but there is also keep in mind nature versus versus nurture right. you know like what might have happened versus like the just what you grew up around and you know the the values that were instilled in you whereas like human design basically 
long story short, there's not really a good way to like boil it all down, but it's it's another kind of like classification system from the universe, and it was channeled to this dude uh, in the 80s. Um, but the crazy thing about it is it's so in-depth, and there's like... Um, you can either be like a manifester, a generator, a projector, a manifesting generator. Um, and there's one other one that I can never think of. Uh, and then there's like channels that are open on you. And so there's like, and it, so it, it infuses astrology and chakras and one other thing. So it's like just this whole like, sure. Uh, you know, you get a profile, but then you have channels that are open within your profile and you have things that, and so anytime, I honestly haven't done a whole lot of deep digging on my own, but Jenny likes to, you know, oh yeah, deep dig on everyone. And so she had, had done mine and read some stuff to me sometimes where I'm just like, like I, it, like gave me chills where I'm like, oh my God, like that. That's like, <laughs> right, it's right. just like, get so specific on the type of person you are if this channel is open and then it's like, whoa, that's right. me. Again, take everything with a grain of salt, but it all just like, it all kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I think people... But I, I'm not a professor, so people, I'm not good yeah. at explaining it. People ultimately want to find and put faith in something and have belief in things that, so to make sense of reality. And I like for me... I grew up in a in a more skeptical like I went to engineering school and like studied scientific method and like I was always to me astrology was just nonsense it was just like woo woo stuff you know and 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 same with like tarot cards and all that stuff but then once I kind of had a more of a psychedelic revolution in my in my high school years and things started to change and I started to like become more aware of things and then started to understand more about the depths of um, our psyche and of of you know experiencing psychedelic um, uh, moments and and, and con- states of consciousness that things started to open up and it's like oh wait okay so like no one really knows what's going on that's pretty obvious I mean there seems to be lots of different ways to do things and it seems to be most of it most of what you have control over is your own belief. And so if there's some if there are methods and ways for people to understand more about themselves even you know even if it's like not dead on or it's not accurate quote unquote even becoming to terms with the fact of like who you identify with as even if it's like wrong you're still questioning quote unquote wrong you're still questioning who you are and I had a, a recent experience you know I've had some t- my cards read a couple of times with tarot and like there was I wasn't impressed with the people who were there and I was closed off to it. And I was just like, eh, I don't, this is like, they're way off. Sounds like something a Taurus would say. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is what happened like maybe in, co- in like years ago. And then more recently I had had one with someone who had been doing it her whole life and she knew exactly this a specific deck and like what every card meant. And she had just every knowledge of even the artwork, where it came from, why it's, why it is what it is, all the different all the different like elements to him all the different everything about it she knew everything about it and you know and read my cards and had her own specific way of of drawing them and and doing that and and it was and i came into it with a more open open um mind and it was fucking spot on like it was crazy i had a, cra- and, a c- yeah, crazy and, one from someone like and, that and, where and, i'm just like <laughs> like a 15 card one not like oh, a three okay. card one which mine was like a yeah they have seven one yeah they i mean there's a handful of different kinds i had one that was and it i had more time and so did she and i was like yeah let's do the big one and it was just like like how the hell would you know you know how the in the way they read the cards it's really like sick (laughs) because i I don't want to like that's the thing is like i don't want to give up too much to like at the beginning if i say i don't know them you know, because I don't want to like make sure that they're yeah. not just like trying to get shit from me. But mm-hmm. at the same time, she was saying like, "Well, we kind of need to know a little bit about who you are, so I can read them more accurately." But I was like, kind of just keeping my mouth shut and just being like, "All right, just take. The, we'll just go one by one, and you know, we'll do this, and then we'll discuss. You know, what's going on." And and it was it was it was crazy. It was just kind of like, 
there was there was so much uh so much in there that I felt was was accurate and like maybe I was just looking for it maybe I, you know but at the same rate well then what's the what's wrong with that what's wrong with me actually being fi- like facing You're part of who your I own, am yeah facing who I am and what my cuz it was like this thing like who you are and all these different aspects and then what your next 3 weeks are going to be in the next 6 months and it was like yeah, next three weeks is going to be shit. And it was like about. right after I got dumped. And it was, was like, oh, and then six months is going to be great. So it was like a great thing for me to be like, yeah. Like I just, okay, like it's going to suck. And that's true. Of course it's going to suck. And it, you know, a minute out, it, it kind of like painted the whole fucking picture of the whole situation from the beginning to the end. Kind of makes it easier. Yeah. It kind of exactly. makes getting, it kind of reminds yeah. you that you are going to get through it too. Like exactly. when something's Which, dark like that, it's, if it if it predicted the before the during and then it says that this is coming, it's like it makes it a little easier to be like, all right, I just need to like shake this off. Yeah, I had a weird. It was opposite. It was like, oh no, your future looks terrible, and it'd just be like, Whew. but you don't ever, you don't no one wants to see that, right? But she didn't pull a bad card, and you know she pulled a good card. Fertility, like, well, it wasn't just she's like, be careful with who you see <laughs> next six months. This is a fertility card, and I was like, okay. <laughs> But it was also six months, and I did it like right after Halloween or right some, and that's when my album comes out too. So it's like okay, it's you know six months. There's gonna be some good nice things happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> April twenty seventh, twenty twenty. I got five more associate producers yesterday. I know. I saw. It's because I did a little deal. I was like, I saw. So it was two hundred bucks, and it was a hundred then, or one hundred fifty to a hundred. Cool. I only did five, and I was like, oh shit, like. Well, I only do five, right? That's how deals work. Like, you know, it's just, I thought it was going to last the whole week. But it yeah, just no, a people, day. I saw, I, I saw, you're crushing it. Well, I need to get you on the Here Here team. It's a, uh, it's you only. still be your own man. You <laughs> teach us how to. <laughs> it, no, I mean, it's, cr- I am only 25% of the way through the goal. I'm trying to, I'm trying to raise uh, money to get a van so I can go on tour like properly with a full, with the band. A van band. Exactly. I mean, that's all. This is literally everything that people like, <laughs> like. Yeah, but you everything you goes still have to like how many months? And like, just yeah. I think I got two months left. And you've had it up for about a month. Yeah. Yeah. So, so quarter of the way through. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird thing, but I I I I used to last year was my first time doing it, doing a fundraiser, but the fundraiser it's also like one of those Kickstarter type things where it's a reward tier system so like you're the first one of the first people to tell me about patreon and we're almost like getting a patreon going you still yeah s- like patreon I still, yeah i still i don't use it as much as i should you know but i have like i i've been uploading stuff there it's like the once i did the fundraiser I was like uh, what do i do yeah fundraiser or patreon but now it seems like they give me money two places they're separate beasts now like the patreon people get to see what's working what I'm working on, and Patreon I, is more of a monthly, yeah, whereas a monthly. the other things is kind but of a my, one-time. With my fundraiser, I do. I added an option for a monthly thing, but no one's used it yet. But like, it's a possibility if someone wants to, you know, if someone wants to get to a certain tier, but they only can pay in installments. Like, you know, I figure a monthly thing would be good. Yeah, that's super cool. But uh, people do want to support the shit we're doing. It's oh, just yeah, a man. matter of asking, which I'm not good at. Yeah, to me, I like have a little. I get to be like, okay, I release everything for free. Everyone uses my shit every day. Yeah, like, please help me. <laughs> De- well, definitely. Like, and but it's like I give, and then people give, and it's like if everyone just gives, that's the, it's perpetuating that whole idea. It's a form of barter. It's people right. realizing that they're getting something they want, and you're giving it, and that's right. and for if, me. If they give, I'd rather be funded by the people who give a fuck. Than just like begging some label or some, some totally someone to just because it keeps me honest and that keeps me accountable to real fucking people mm-hmm. who actually maybe find mm-hmm. value in the music and so when someone comes up to me and tells me that the song like got them through their like the death of their parent you know and tells me and starts opening up all about that shit it's like I'm just yeah like, it's powerful uh, it's huge I just thought it sounded cool. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, there's there's deep philosophical and like and honest like t- like storytelling that I I try to to uh, achieve in the music, and I think that's what people find the value in is yeah because it's my own meditations, and like some of my favorite books like I love reading Marcus Aurelius's book called Meditations. It's all these like stoic 
thoughts that he has about his day to day and like how to live be uh, how to live your life fully and honestly and it's a whole like it's a it's still to this day an epic book that people still consume and still find meaning in stuff and it's like if i can come anywhere close to something like that of giving a positive influence on the world through my own struggle like might as well that's what the artist's role is i think you know like it's to me it's a it's an incredibly spiritual and sacred role uh, yeah you know and it, it only gets reaffirmed when people tell me crazy shit like that like where they just feel like they can open up to me because at after a show it's just like someone they're not even that big of a fan but they were they, they connected and they just start telling me about their best friend and all the shit that happened and all this stuff and it's like oh okay like they feel they feel like they can like they might not ever tell anyone else and that's crazy to me but like it's a powerful role, I suppose. Like so, it yeah, seems, absolutely. It seems very like overwhelming. To That's me what sometimes. we're here for, right? You yeah. know, just to like everyone's just trying to like work together and just live their fucking lives and just be happy with each other. And it's also con- convoluted so many times with people's identities and their egos and the love and loss and like people's attachments to other people and things and all the. It's such a. a it's it seems complicated when you think about it with all that and you granularize it and you're like oh this and this and all these you know all these different archetypes that people have and all these myths and all these ideas and possibilities and stuff and it's just overwhelming sometimes but at the end of the day it's just kind of like breathe and let go and just laugh and then that's all you can do yeah <laughs> it's like you make it simple as hard, you make it as complicated as you want the more the more you think about it oh, this and this and this and this and this and this, and this. No matter how, what, no, no matter what level of anxiety you have, is not going to change the outcome. True yeah. that. <laughs> that's some real shit. I'm like, I've been there so many times, going to panic attacks and anxiety, and you know, or you know, depressed periods of depression, where it's like, well, you can't change the past, you can't change the future, but you only have control over this current moment, belief and thought that you have. I had to do that big time with just, like, the political environment. Oh, man, yeah. Where, like, you know, it feels like deep, there's something deep within me to, like, try and help the world on, like, a big scale someday. Because I'm just, I've always wanted to be a connector and just create a positive wake, you know? Uh, And so then, like, as, you know, Bernie was getting fucked three, four years ago and just seeing that whole thing, it really just, like... It, like crush my spirit yeah you know is. i was following the whole time and then just this then it's just like so a, weird to be so aware yeah. but but to pick it back on what you're saying i basically had to get to the point where i realized like i'm not going to change a crowd of people or like a country or a st- you know until i change and control like myself yourself, yeah. and then that can affect one at a time people around yeah. you and if and everyone if you starts can, doing that it's like that that can change. be profound so yeah i had to stop thinking that i needed to go straight to the top you know work up right. a positive positive way um yeah i think you're from I think the bottom you're here presents you're doing some of that for sure you're like achieving a lot of that a like curation of community building and some of the some of the most awesome people i've met in this city have been through here, here. Yeah, events, we have you know, a lot and, of awesome people and that hang. And it's just like it's just a simple community, you know, like simple community building. If you if you want, yeah, what you were saying about like folk, like paying more attention to yourself and being more honest with yourself. That's a lesson that I've learned that I'm learn still learning, you know. But like it kind of hit me as you know, after I got my after I got dumped for the first time. I've never got dumped before, and it was just like boom. It's like holy crap! Like wow, I put so much effort and 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 emotion into this thing and then it all just gets taken away you know and then i'm like i want well then you're like what's wrong with me yeah exactly there's so many different things that are going through my head and but the one of the things i was thinking about when it was just kind of exactly what you said was and there's something i read it was it was um how can you be so i think i just read this the other day young pueblo you know that guy on instagram (sighs) worth a follow that guy Uh. is is he knows his shit he he's, has daily things about s- just really profound. He's got good insight. But he said something about um, how can you be close to someone else if you're so far away from yourself? 
and it's and it's like damn like that that's the truth like if you're if you're not even honest with yourself if you don't even know what the fuck's going on inside you like or even care to want to know then whatever relationship you're going to be in being close to someone is not going to be what you want it to be because you're always going to be incomplete and if you in a lot of times relationships are just people trying to be complete with the other person but i hear you totally. with the with the politics like i was over in ireland when it all happened and when trump got elected and uh, you know i to me now it seems like it's just fucking business as usual nonsense except like people just don't like the way he tweets and obviously he's super corrupt and obviously he there's a lot of issues with that but like it's not really that much worse than the last i don't know no, like he yeah. just the mask is just off now yeah. it seems that's the way i look at well, it well he's just such a moron <laughs> that it's so much more apparent that they are fucking us yeah and whereas like i think but like know, hillary would have been just as bad yeah it, you, you and know that, and like that's what, the it, worst part about it is i fucking voted for her or maybe not just scared. as bad that was yeah, but like there's a silver she's lining bad. for trump she's because bad. It, it's it has um, awoken the progressive base and you know and uh, you know you think they're gonna cheat bernie again yeah 100 percent. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean they are do you think already do you think he'll be able to win oh here's the thing i'm just they worried about last in time general. And he was like 44 percent or like 40 percent of the delegates he still got and they cheated him so it's like that was last time yeah no that my fear is that He's it's the only here. one they don't here. want to do. Oh, yeah. That's like, him and Andrew Yang, from what I've heard, uh, I don't know a ton about Yang. And Tulsi Gabbard. Um, but, like, they don't want the people who will actually make a change. So, like, yeah, I think they will try to cheat them for sure. They'll try. But is it is it going to be different this time around? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But, I, I yeah, we'll, we'll see. I have to pee. Well, should we? Yeah, I mean, this is two hours, so. We did a great job. Yeah, that was great. We covered a lot of good topics. Psychedelics, astrology, Hear Here Presents, food. Yeah. That's some good shit, I'm, um, So, yeah, follow Hear Here Presents on Instagram. Is that I'm allowed to promote, yeah, right? plug all your shit, man. <laughs> it's all in the description, too. At Here Here Presents We're talking on to the Instagram, microphones. Talking. on uh, Facebook. Um, we have a website. YouTube. We're gonna, yeah, YouTube. <laughs> Go to here. Oops. Here, here presents dot com. You can follow them all there. Um, we're gonna be launching a new website next month. And that's month. here. Here is here. H e a r h e r e presents. 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 Pre no presents. Um. <laughs> yeah, we uh we are a uh, live music video series promo company. Uh, all sorts of different things within the music community, like bringing people together, and uh, so you should check out what we do if you have the time. Yeah, um, it's worth it. Check out. It's, it's worth it. If you don't trust me, watch Cola Cola's approved. video. Yes, absolutely. Cola approved. Here, right. Get a picture of me while we're still on air. Okay. I want them to have to listen. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. So the uh, button is around the front. So this just don't here? cover the main. Yeah. Yep. There you go. That's a, that's a very strange spot. For I, it's a weird spot for a button. Okay. Boom. Whoa. I saw that flash. Awesome, Ryan. Flash Bandicoot. Thanks for, thanks for coming on the cast. Thanks for having me. Oh, number 16. Number 16. Number 16. Are almost legal. 16th. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.